All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word, and all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name, Rakah is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwath is sisters. Shalawan means peace, and Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 and verse 1. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the how by Shema Ushai, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is for the first author of beauty hath created them. And I want to go into a lesson through the spirit based on the clips that you see. You know, um, anytime I see a collection of these type of clips through the spirit, you know, I try to do a video on it just to get it all in one uh, clip, so to speak, to be a reminder of the beauty of Yahweh Bashim Shai. You know, the, the first author of beauty, as he's described, you know, reminds us of the power that we serve. All right. Verse four uh, reads, but if they were astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures proportionably the maker of them is seen so when you look at nature you look at the beauty of nature you know when i look at these creatures you know it really leaves me in awe through the spirit of how much greater and beautiful the heavenly father is because he's the source of all of that creative energy like look at the different creatures and the different styles and the different color patterns you know these are just clips of creatures not even the, the weather and the, the different sceneries across the planet that the lord set up the style, the grace of the Heavenly Father can be seen throughout creation. And that's why Wisdom of Solomon says, Surely vain are all men by nature, you know, who are ignorant of the Heavenly Father. You know, they look at creation and they worship something within creation, not even being able to fathom that the Heavenly Father created the heavens. And that's why the Lord, when you look at how the Lord dealt with us as a nation, he called us stupid. You know, he called us sottish children. Why? Because we were bowed down before gods that were no gods. And here it is, the author of all this beauty chose us as a nation of people out of all the people on the face of the earth. And our people would have rather served something that looked like creation as opposed to serving the creator. All right. This is Romans chapter one. And I'm going to jump down. To. Man. You know what? I'm going to start at verse. 18 for the wrath of Yahweh by Shema Shai is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of Yahweh by Shema Shai is manifest in them for the most high has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen when you look at all of these different creatures it's obvious that everything that's done was intentional Look at how how the color patterns are on certain creatures. The colors all complement each other. That's not a product of evolution. That's a product of the author of beauty. Leaving his signature everywhere we look around creation. And to to think that this is the power that we serve. And out of all the people on the planet Earth, man, he chose us. Not just us as a people, but out of all the people on the planet, he chose you to know him as he is. Not according to your own imagination is special. Because when you see this creation, when you see things, you, this is the reminder of the power we serve. All right. Again, in verse 20, it says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. And this is why the wrath of the Lord is going to be kindled against the world, because look at this great beauty. 
All right. And to look at the great beauty and acknowledge that there's a maker, there's a creator behind it. There's also instructions. There's also a way that he would love. He would like for man to uh, conduct themselves on earth and they forsaken that way for something else. And that's why the wrath of the Lord is going to balance this equation out, because I started off with verse 18. It says, for the wrath of Yahweh Shai is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of Yahweh Shemal Shai is manifest in them for Yahweh Shemal Shai has showed it unto them. So the Lord has showed this beautiful creation unto people. All right. Giving man a mind to understand. All right. But even with everything around them, they will not acknowledge the Heavenly Father as the power that, sir, that governs the world. All right. Two thirds of our people refuse to acknowledge their position as the servants of the Heavenly Father. But this is the power that we serve. Look at the beauty that the Lord is man. All right. Verse 21 reads, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. All right, and this is why the anger of the Lord has always been kindled against our people concerning idolatry because it is a stupid thing to do to worship things that that the Lord created when he gave you the culture and the position of worshiping him. That's why Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, it says this is your wisdom in the sight of the nations that see how you conduct yourself in. And they're supposed to look at how we move and say, why are we doing what we're doing? Look at this wise and understanding people because they serve a power. Man, let's go there. This is Deuteronomy chapter four. And it's like it's, it makes it even more special when you actually see and think about the vastness of creation and the, the, the style and grace of the heavenly father and how he made things. And that out of all the nations on the earth, he chose one nation to serve him, one nation that's close to him. That's why even two thirds of our people, you know, when you deal with the church, you know, a lot of people go there for the songs because our people is in them to worship the heavenly father. They have a zeal, but just not according to knowledge. All right. This Deuteronomy chapter four and verse five. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my power commanded me that you should do so in the land where he go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who has power so nigh unto them as the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day. So by our conduct, the world is supposed to recognize that the power we serve, all right, is above uh, an image, all right, or deeming fire and wind and some form of creation as God. And that's why we have a special, the Lord calls a holy people separate. All right. To proclaim the holiness of the heavenly father through our conduct and through our understanding. And that's why it's beautiful in these last days that the creator of all of this beauty out of all the people that are of the nation of Israel, you know, though Israel be as the sand of the sea, the Lord gave you a mind to understand him as he is. And that's extremely important because most people's understanding of God is according to their imagination and, and not as it is written. When they hear as it is written, they are offended. Yet this is the uh, this is the entity that created all of these beautiful things that we see. But as 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 beautiful as creation is, they won't regard the heavenly father as the power that sir, that that governs the world that's made the world. All right. So that's why the Lord said they are without excuse. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and five reads for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures proportionably the maker of them is seen. But yet for this, they are the less to be blamed for they paired venture air seeking Yahweh by Shemel Shah and desires to find him for being conversant in his works. They search him diligently and believe their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen. Now think about the images that you're looking at. 
and that the majority of the people who've probably taken these images all right probably don't believe in the heavenly father or they believe in the heavenly father but it's according to their imagination they're able to look at the creation of the lord they're desirous to look into the works but they won't acknowledge the work master all right and that's why the lord said they are they will not be parted for that all right now two-thirds of our people after they learn this through death by pain they're going to come back in their right mind all right but the lord's going to judge the world for their willful ignorance man all right wisdom of solomon 13 and 7 for being conversant in his works they search him diligently yeah you have people that spend their entire life on one section of the lord's creation you know you have biologists that spend their time their their whole life studying biology but can't understand who the heavenly father is you have astronomers and astrologers that look up at the heavens and see the stars and the planets but can't acknowledge the heavenly father you have these uh underwater these people that study the water all right but they can't understand that the heavenly father governs the world and the one people that the world looks down upon as a as a population all right is the one nation that the lord chose the whole world looks down upon Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but they're in awe of the works of the Heavenly Father. Not realizing that they're they're basically um they're basically looking down on the Heavenly Father's works and his people. Because the Lord made Israel a special people unto himself. And that's a part of our punishment. But the beauty of this is that the Lord's gonna return that understanding to the world through this demonstration of power. All right, real quick, this is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and verse 17, because this is what they do, especially Christianity. They acknowledge the beauty of the Heavenly Father's creation, but then they leave out his judgments. You know, they, they talk about how beautiful the things that they see around them are, but then they leave out the judgments of the Heavenly Father as if there's no beauty in that. There's beautiful. There's beauty in everything the Lord does. There's beauty in judgment when you understand it. But as the scriptures say, evil men understand not judgment. All right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 and 16 reads, for thy power is the beginning of righteousness. And because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, thou showest thy strength. And among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. So the world sees the beauty of the Lord's creation, right? The world sees that they, they 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 take some of the Lord's creatures and put them in cages just to look at the, the beauty of the Lord's invention. Yet they don't believe the Heavenly Father governs the world. They believe that they're put here to do as they wish, as they will. And they abuse the creation of the Heavenly Father. So he's going to return with power because they don't believe he has power. But for those who know it, he's going to make their boldness manifest. And when you look at the beauty of the creation, all right, it, it's, it leaves you in awe through the spirit, especially when you understand how much greater the Heavenly Father is compared to the works that we witness, the, the works that we see. All right. Real quick. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 42 and 21. He hath garnished the excellent works of his wisdom, and he is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto him may nothing be added, neither can he be diminished. And he hath no need of any counselor. When you look at all the creation, all the creatures, the abundance, the diversity of the creatures, the Lord didn't need help. He didn't need a counselor. He didn't need somebody to say, now nah, do the color pattern this way. All of this comes from the source, man. In great detail. Verse 22. Oh, how desirable are all his works and that a man may see even to a spark. All these things live and remain forever for all uses, and they are all obedient, man. And we are blessed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shah to know the Lord with understanding. All right. According to what he's revealed unto us. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to start up Ecclesiastes 42 and 15. I will now remember the works of the Lord and declare the things that I've seen and the words of the Lord are his works. The sun that giveth light looketh upon all things, and the work thereof is full of the glory of the Lord. The Lord hath not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works, <laughs> which the Almighty Lord firmly settled, that whatsoever is might that whatsoever is might be established for his glory. So anything we see in creation, we look and give glory to the Heavenly Father because it's his mind that birthed all of this, man. Your very existence 
is a product of the thought of the Lord, man. The will and intent of the Lord, your very spirit that's within your body is a product of the Heavenly Father. All right. When you think about how you're made, the Lord made you perfectly. When you think about how you look, all right. Even though we're in a lower state, the Lord meant for you to look exactly how you look. There was no accident with that. You having this understanding, there was no accident with that. It was all intentional. And I'm going to repeat it as many times as the spirit will allow me. We look around and see beauty in creation and then look in the mirror and think we're the one mistake the Lord made. The Lord made no mistakes. Everything that the Lord has made, he's made in perfection. And with great labor, he's making the nation of Israel perfect, beginning with the elect. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. But when you look at this, this is a reminder of the power that we serve, man. That our power is great above all things, man. Above all works, man. When you look at the works, understand that you are servant. This is the power that you serve, man. All right, real quick. This is uh, Job 34 and 33. Should it be according to... No, let me start up. This is Job 34 and 14. All right. And it reads, Job chapter 34 and verse 14 reads, If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself the spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust. So in essence, everything that we have, you know, our very spirit, our breath is a product of the source. Our consciousness, as Esau calls it, our awareness is a product of the Heavenly Father. It's a product of the source. When you look at these animals and you look at how they conduct themselves, how they move around the earth, that's a product of the mind of the Heavenly Father. You know, people are amazed at how robots are made and how Esau creates these. Well, look at nature. Nature is a product of the Lord creating uh, creatures that have millions of millions and trillions of cells in their bodies. All right. And then the Lord makes the animals to interact with each other so that the ecosystem is balanced. Certain animals diets is plants and insects. Certain animals diets is what is uh, is creatures, other creatures just to balance out the ecosystem. And all of this brings balance to our understanding. It all makes us look at creation with all man, because we know that the heavenly father made all of these things and he made it with understanding. And we live in a world that doubts that. But when you look at this, you would understand and you look at this and you see it for what it is. You, you give glory to the Heavenly Father, whereas the world looks at certain things like this and they're completely ungrateful, unthankful. We look at these things and we say, call Allah Miha Bashim al for making such a beautiful creation and allowing us to behold it, man. Real quick, and I'll, I'll probably end it with this. There's Ecclesiastes chapter 17. In verse five, they received the use of the five operations of the Lord. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. And in the seventh speech, an interpreter of the cogitations thereof. Counsel and a tongue and eyes, ears and a heart gave he them to understand. Withal, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. He set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. So while we look at creation, we look at it, Lord willing, we're a part of that number, giving glory to the Heavenly Father and being amazed at the Father's power and his majesty and how he can create great uh, creatures and small creatures with such detail and beauty. Whereas the world looks at these things and they take it for granted and they don't give credit to the creator, man. All right. Verse nine, he gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever that they might declare his works with understanding. Because eventually, as a nation of people, we're going to be made immortal so that we can just follow the Lord and, and follow his works forever. We don't have to die and have to relearn how to speak and read and then and then give the glory to the Heavenly Father's works. The Lord's going to allow us to be immortal so that we can just take that ride to infinity and beyond, so to speak. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23 reads for you. How about created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. That's why we're known as the sons of God. And part of that inheritance is the Lord giving us understanding concerning his works. And it's going to even be it's going to be opened up unto us even more in the kingdom. So as we look and we regard the beauty of the Lord now, 
The Lord's going to open up our understanding so that we have even more of an understanding of the marvelous works of the Heavenly Father, man. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Call her love, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rokakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word with all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.